Hello everyone, this is David from Automotive Press. I am so sorry that I didn't have a chance to talk about the new teaser photo and a short video that came out today from Toyota about the 2022 Toyota Tundra. Actually, I was busy entertaining some friends and guests on my boat for a fishing trip. So I do have lots of hobbies, one of which, of course, is about cars and trucks, but I also enjoy going out uh, on the outdoor as we were doing some fishing for salmon. So my apology for being late today with uh, information on this new teaser. And actually, I wasn't even going to talk about this new teaser photo because I already talked about most of the things that were released today several months ago in one of my videos, which is things like the uh, coil spring in the rear, uh, the new Falcon tires, whether or not there is a hybrid or no hybrid, the exhaust coming out on the driver's side versus the passenger side, all those things we talked about already. So I was gonna leave it alone, but uh, many of you guys asked me to give my engineer's perspective on what I actually saw today. So I'm going to uh, demystify and also clarify a few things because there appears to be some misunderstanding out there. And so I just want to clear the air and tell you uh, as honest as I can what I see in these photos and short video and hopefully give you a clear picture of what's going on with the 2022 Toyota Tundra. walk you through some insights that I've gathered from these photographs, but also from my own investigation, which I continue to do for the 2022 Tundra. One of the things that no one is talking about is the steering mechanism. As many of you guys probably know, the whole auto industry has moved on to electric power steering or EPS for short. And of course, the problem with the EPS in comparison to hydraulic power steering is that it doesn't have a good sensation and you lose a lot of the road feel uh, while driving and so people complain that it feels numb, it doesn't feel connected and so forth. But you know more than 95 to 98 percent of the cars and trucks out there uh, are all using EPS. But the good news, something that maybe you can't quite gather from these photos released today but I know for sure it's going to be the case, is that the 2022 Tundra will have hydraulic power steering. This is a big deal because uh, hydraulic power steering means that there is a hydraulic pump that um, provides power assist to the steering compared to an electric motor that provides that assist. And what it does is give you that feeling of the road, uh, the feedback from the actual driving because the hydraulic pump has to build up its pressure and you can kind of feel it as you turn the steering to the left or to the right. Thankfully, the Tundra retains the hydraulic steering so uh, we can expect to have the same kind of a good road field that we already have in the current Tundra. In fact, I believe that it's going to be even better and tighter than the current one uh, and it's all possible because they retained hydraulic power steering. Now just to clarify, electric power steering or EPS has two different types. One is where the motor is located on the steering column and the other one is when the electric motor is attached to the rack and pinion gear and it's moving or assisting the movement of the steering. When the electric motor is attached to the rack and pinion, you can still get pretty good sensation and road feel, but when the motor is attached to the steering column, as it is the case with most cars these days, you lose complete sensation of the road. So um, anyway, it doesn't apply to the Tundra case because it does have the hydraulic, but something to keep in mind in case you were wondering what, what is wrong with EPS. Well, not all things are wrong with EPS. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind is that um, people are saying, well, wait a minute, it cannot be hydraulic steering because then you can't have any of this latest technology for safety. Uh, things like when you uh, are steering out of the lane and the system tried to take you back into the center lane, right? We have that feature now. Actually, in the case of Tundra with the hydraulic power steering, it has electric steering actuator. And that allows Toyota to have all of the great safety features associated with the steering mechanism, such as lane tracing assist uh, uh, and other features that are electrically related, but can be used in hydraulic steering. So if you have been hearing from people that you cannot have some of these steering assist uh, safety features combined with the hydraulic steering, well that actually isn't the case, as we have already seen in the 2022 Land Cruiser. So that's something I wanted to first tell you right off the bat. I know it's not directly 
related to the photograph, but it is related to the chassis, suspension, and steering mechanism. So it's really important to know this one significant news. With that out of the way, let me talk about the stabilizer bar, which we call anti-sway bar. I do not know why people are saying sway bar. That is exact opposite, right? Anti-sway bar is exactly what it said. It's supposed to prevent swaying of the truck, in this case, or car, by providing stabilization between the two wheels. That's why it's called anti-sway bar and stabilizer bar. But some people are calling it sway bar. Okay, go figure. That doesn't make any sense at all. You're not installing something that makes the truck sway more, right? Anyhow, a lot of people seem to be commenting that the stabilizer bar on this 2022 Tundra appears to be much bigger than in previous versions. Well, that is actually wrong. It's just a camera angle again that's playing tricks with our eyes. It's about the same diameter and size as the ones that I see in 2021 Tundra TRD Pro. And also keep in mind that you don't want the stabilizer bar to be too thick. That also defeats the purpose because if it's too thick, you're going to get a very difficult maneuvering and uh, unbalancing of the feel when you're driving. So you want it just the right thickness and maybe the new one is tad thicker uh, and in terms of diameter than the previous one in the 2021s, but it is not substantially bigger. I don't know why people are saying that. Now moving on to other aspects of the photo, the 2022 Tundra will have the Fox shocks. We can confirm that now with internal bypass and a reservoir, even though you can't see the reservoir in some of the photos. Uh, so that's really no surprise at all with two bump stops that people have already commented. I will say the bump stop, the yellow portion, is definitely a little bit larger than in the previous Tundra, and it appears to be a little bit bigger than what I would normally see in trucks of this type. So I think that is indicative that they probably softened the spring just a tiny bit in comparison to before, which means you will have to increase the uh, bump stop to make sure that it doesn't get bottomed out. And the reason why you want to soften the spring is to uh, give that better comfort. Uh, because we know that Tundra TRD Pro is being moved upwards and more upscale, I can see why Toyota engineers will soften the spring just a tiny bit, maybe around 5% or so, to give it a little bit better ride than perhaps in previous uh, versions, even though there was nothing wrong with the ride in the 2021 TRD Pro. So I suspect that's the reason why the bump stops have gotten a little bit bigger as well. In terms of the tires, uh, the new Tundra will now have a Falcon Wild Peak tires. Now this is a very important news because previously even the TRD Pro Tundra had Bridgestone Alenza tires. Uh, Bridgestone Alenza tires are highway slash street tires not designed for much of off-roading but it has a maximum comfort and quietness and by moving from that set of tire to the new uh, Wild Peak which is much more off-road oriented uh, it's an indication that they're also moving the Tundra up to a higher performing uh, off-road vehicle so that's a really good news for those people who really want to take the Tundra off track and enjoy, enjoy the mountain ride and go through some difficult terrain and there's some other interesting uh, insight as well. So for example, people weren't sure if the Tundra will or will not have the air suspension. They were trying to figure out if there's some kind of wire going to the, the shocks. And what you can clearly tell, the shocks are not air suspension, not on the TRD Pro. Not sure if they will offer the uh, air suspensions on the Platinum model, for example. But on the TRD Pro, these are the standard Fox suspension with uh, reservoir and uh, internal bypass. Uh, and they're clearly not uh, air suspension because air suspension have a, a kind of like a bag, bag look. It kind of looks like a balloon wrapped around the shock components. So it's clearly not uh, air suspension, so we can confirm that. I believe it will be a five-link suspension, which is a huge benefit, uh, especially in combination uh, with the coil spring. It's going to give you, give you way better control of the ride, uh, of the driving feel, and it, generally speaking, it's going to perform better both on the road and off road. I can also confirm at least for the TRD Pro, there isn't any active electronic suspension components. So you won't be able to adjust the suspension setting from inside the truck in terms of firm or soft or whatever it is. So that uh, capability doesn't exist for the TRD Pro. Perhaps again for a platinum or limited model, they could offer that still. But from the picture we've seen, there is no active electronic suspension for sure. Also, another interesting piece of news is the fact that the exhaust system is now only on one side on the driver's side versus the passenger side. And that means the gas tank is located always 
opposite from the exhaust. Now, do you know why that's the case? It's because if you're filling up a, a gas tank, uh, you do not want to be dripping any kind of fuel onto a hot exhaust, which is usually metal, of course, and so you don't want any kind of combustion happening. So the exhaust and the gasoline tank is typically speaking on the opposite side if it's a single exhaust. So it's interesting to note that uh, the new Tundra TRD Pro has single exhaust on the driver's side with a fuel tank on the passenger side. And the reason why this change has taken place is because uh, the Tundra shares its platform, the TNGA platform, with the new Land Cruiser 300 series. And to avoid re-engineering the chassis or the exhaust system, I believe Toyota simply kept the same side as Land Cruiser 300 to save a bit of time and engineering cost. Now, interesting enough, Toyota kept the fuel filler location on the driver's side to make it more convenient, but also made sure that the location was away from the exhaust so that they don't come in contact. What else can I tell you? I believe that the new Tundra will have electric locking differential or e-locker we call it for short, both front and back. Again, that's a bit difficult to confirm right now, but I am so certain that it will have uh, front and back. And I'm quite sure that the actual bed is going to be composite style, which is uh, basically the same as what we have in a Tacoma, much like the one I have, which is a 2021 Tacoma TRD Pro. You can see when you look uh, at the photo from underneath, there is kind of a rib design. You can clearly tell it's a composite material and not aluminum or uh, metal. So um, it's possible that it's a combination of aluminum or metal bed with a composite backing underneath. That is actually possible. But what I see on the photo is a composite material for the bed. A couple of other interesting things that people are talking about is that uh, the shocks themselves seems to be very low, very close to the ground, uh, attached very close to the actual axle. And so uh, some of the people in the forum and other um, network is commenting that that is not a good thing for off-roading. Actually, almost every other truck out there have the same situation where the shocks goes below the center line of the axle and because it's uh, very close to the wheel though, you're not gonna hit that shock when you're going off-roading. And by design, you want it lower that way to again provide the maximum uh, shocking capability and maximum performance around off-roading. So that is a bit of a misunderstanding. There's nothing wrong with having that shock located below the center line of the wheels. The last thing I'm going to point out is the fact that uh, some people say there is an orange cable you can see at the very top and uh, people are saying, well, that is probably the indication that it's a hybrid because it's the high voltage cable. Well, that one is going to remain a mystery because first of all, typically speaking for the high voltage cable for Toyota hybrid or plug-in hybrid, the cable is quite a bit thicker. It's not that thin. What we're seeing there is too thin to be a high voltage cable. So uh, that cable that we see is not likely uh, an actual high voltage cable. However, What's confusing is that the color of the cable is somewhat of an orange color, a little bit different from the suspension color red. So it's possible that it is part of a hybrid cable system and that's why it's a bit thin uh, and it's a bit, uh, it's a bit different in design, it's kind of ribbed, but it's not the main high voltage cable itself. Um, but it's also possible that the color just looks orange and maybe it's actually red and maybe it's just part of the conduit for uh, suspension pieces. So that part is a little hard to say and we will find out shortly if it's truly a hybrid. Uh, one possibility is that uh, Tundra TRD Pro will have a mild hybrid system as opposed to a full hybrid system because that's a rumor that's coming from Japan for the Land Cruiser hybrid they are saying that it may just be a mild hybrid that has um, the actual electric motor kicking in when you are starting from a stop sign or traffic light, but it doesn't keep on running. And so that's a possibility that maybe the 2022 Tundra TRD Pro will have um, a mild hybrid version. So those are things that we don't know yet. And to confuse the situation further, Toyota has iForce Max trademark name, but also the Hybrid Max trademark name just recently. So what does that mean? Is the Tundra TRD Pro's iForce Max, again, is it a mild hybrid? And then the Hybrid Max is for the full hybrid or plug-in hybrid that might come later. 
Well, those are things we're going to find out. I think September 19th is the official release of the Tundra information uh, sometime that week anyway, because it's somehow coinciding with a Texas um, festival of some kind. So uh, we will find out very soon about all things to do with Tundra. So let me know in the comments below what else you want to know, because I have a lot more interesting things to comment, but I cannot possibly cover everything now, uh, including interesting topic on uh, about diesel. I have a comment on that but I will do another video about whether or not Diza will show up in the Tundra. Uh, my quick answer is no, but I'm going to explain why. So thank you so much for watching my channel. Let's continue to keep an eye on the Tundra because two more teaser photo uh, empty boxes have been created by Toyota, which means we're going to get two more teaser photo before the official launch. Well, it's going to be fun watching it. Thank you so much. We'll catch you soon.